we sit 12th in the table just over halfway through the season. Thanks to goals from Koba and Pablo Martinez, we beat Bordeaux 2-0. But then we had a disaster, as Etienne Green will be out for five weeks following an injury in training. At least he's now happy to stay at the club following transfer interest in January. This means we have to play our backup goalkeeper instead, who isn't nearly as good. However, he almost kept a clean sheet as we beat Havre 3-1, their goal coming in the 91st minute. The win puts us in the top half of the table for the first time this season, and then we were super unlucky not to get the win over Will Stills Reams. Despite having double the number of shots our visitors had, we ended in a 1-1 draw. This means we're now five games unbeaten as we head into a tricky march, where we're also expecting our youth intake. This is the preview right here, and we're meant to get some really good wingers and attacking midfielders, maybe a decent striker and a slim chance of a good goalkeeper everything else probably not going to be so good. We had a very good youth intake last season. Uh, these top three players here with five star and two four and a half stars of potential are looking quite nice. They're all actually national to standard level, which is the fourth division, which is where our B team actually play. But our B team right now is very saturated. A lot of these contracts will actually not expire until next season. So I think we need to try and get rid of as many of these players as possible over summer because a lot of them are just never gonna do anything. Keep the best talents, get them progressing, get them into our first team. Today though, we we kick things off with a very tough game away to Monaco. We've had a good run playing against teams below us in the table like Bordeaux and Montpellier and Havre and Reims all below us in the table. So now we get into the teams above us, I think we may end up losing a little bit. Now, although we are sitting in a good league position right now, I think we're only nine points above the relegation zone or is it 11 points? It's one of the two. Like we are not that far away from the relegation zone despite being in the top half. And there's a lot of football still to play as Gunduz makes a really good save there for us. I expected the worst from him when he came into the team to replace the injured Etienne Green, but actually he's been pretty solid. He's not kept a clean sheet yet, but at least we haven't lost whilst he's been in the sticks. I think that might change today against Monaco though. They are just a step better than us as things stand. And as they stand, yeah, 11 points ahead of the relegation zone to Montpellier, that relegation playoff spot. So, you know, if things go wrong in the second half of the season, towards the end of the season where we start losing against Monaco, we've got PSG coming up, we've got, I think, Marseille coming up again soon as well. You know, there are some games there that we could easily lose and drop all the way back down. So today is more damage limitation than anything really. Just try and pull off some nice results, get a draw here and there potentially, show these big teams what we can do as hopefully we look to stay in this division for next season. I don't think we'll go down. I don't think we are poor enough to be going down. I think we have sort of gotten to our rhythm in the second half of the, well, the sort of the middle part of the season. And as we go into the full bulk of the second half of the season, I think we'll have enough about us to stay, stay up in this division. Although if we do stupid things like this all the time, and uh, luckily we haven't conceded, but other times we will off stupid things like that. Another chance of Monaco just before half time. And this time, I think the post may have just helped us there. I'm not sure if the keeper got the touch on there or the post got the touch on there, but we do keep the scoreline at 1-0. And maybe in the second half, we look to change our attackers around. Now, they have been pretty decent in the past few game weeks. I mean, Brian Moreno's not scored many goals, but he has been getting a lot of assists. And as long as he contributes to goals, I'm pretty happy. But I think with Koba's just picked up a knock, I think we'll just bring him off as a precaution here. Uh, we'll bring Benjamin on for him instead. And maybe what we do is take Ahmed off for Robert Navarro and maybe we bring Devine on up top instead and make him a advanced forward on attack. Interesting that Belich is playing really well today on a 7.2 rating. He must be doing some good work in that defensive midfield spot, stopping Monaco from getting forward and trying to score any more goals. But as we sort of predicted, 15 shots to Monaco, six to us. We kind of knew the game was going to go this way. I did think we concede a couple more, and I suppose there is still time with 50 minutes to go for it to concede a few more goals to make it three or four nil. However, 1-0 is a fairly respectable scoreline, I must say, right now for us. I'm pretty happy with that. And maybe we could even snatch a late equaliser as Divine puts a bit of pressure on the centre-backs there, but they do get the ball forward to Golovan, uh, who gives it into Balogun, who must be offside there, has to be offside. And the referee is now going to VAR and is going to tell us he was about 50 yards offside. Please, if you'd be so kind, VAR. Thank you. So not quite the result we wanted, but probably the result we expected unless something magical happens here. Cross into the middle is just collected. Okay, right. I don't think anything's going to happen off the back of this then. Unless 
The keeper just chucks it to Divine and Divine can score into an empty net. He doesn't quite do that, but we do win possession as we bring it forward through Pablo Martinez into Benjamin who finds Navarro. Navarro has to dribble backwards though, gives it to Cafro who finds Appia in space to pull a ball across the six yard area. Navarro's there, shot blocked on the edge of a six yard area. And the ball has been recycled, but I think that's what the highlight was for. That was what the chance was for. And as uh, Monaco win possession back, they give it straight back to us. As Pablo Martinez finds Navarro and then Monaco can get it away again. And I think that is going to be full time. We had our chance right at the end. We couldn't take it. I think 1-0 Monaco is probably an accurate scoreline. However, our next game is against Lille, who are doing surprisingly poorly this season. I mean, they're down in 15th, just above those relegation spots right now. So if we are going to win a game today, it's probably going to be this one. What we can do is bring Gonzalo Estevez back on the pitch. Appia was playing last game out because Estevez had a suspension. In fact, if we go to a different screen, I just want to double check like how everyone's form in the last five games has been. And most people have been playing well, apart from Ahmed, actually. Maybe we bring... Navarro on instead, although Mitrovic is getting back to fitness now. He's just coming back from his big injury. If we look at his uh, injury history, he was out for, now that says two weeks. I feel like that was more than two weeks. Either way, we can get him playing back on that left-hand side. And I'm hoping he can score himself a hat-trick today to make sure we do pick up at least one win in today's episode. Although judging by these first 25 minutes, not an awful lot is going to happen in this game. There's really nothing going on, not a single highlight yet as we very quickly approach half time. Could this be a highlightless first half? And if that is the case, that is concerning as Pablo Martinez has gone down to a quite poor condition right now, as we do have a highlightless first half here. Pablo Martinez, we might look to bring him off soon. Tactically, what's he saying? Injured but physically shake the knockoff. Let's give him the first five minutes after half time, I think. I'm going to thrash the arms, not good enough, and players seem motivated by that. This is the game we have to win today, really. Uh, if we want to do anything, we have to win this game today. As Fontan, finally with the first highlight of the game, gives it to Pablo Martinez, who is still a little bit down on his knock right there. I think we'll take him off shortly as Belic brings the ball forward, shoots from distance, and puts it just wide and high at the crossbar. So yeah, I think we'll take Pablo Martinez off, bring Benjamin on and swap him and Koba over. None of our front three are really having a particularly good game, I must say. So actually I might take Brea Moreno off and bring Divine on instead. Maybe also shout, demand more and go a little bit more attacking with our stance and hope that just tries to break the lines a little bit, gives us a chance late on in the game. But right now it's going towards a very, very boring nil-nil draw where we've seen one highlight in this entire game. 10 minutes to go, right, surely at this stage. Benjamin goes further forward. Belich drops into this sort of role here. You become a, a shadow striker. Let's try and get more people forward and scoring goals. I'll also bring both our wingers off for Navarro and Ahmed. Maybe swap those two over like that. We'll do a quick shout of encourage. That usually works well when we're drawing nil nil. Encourage them to get a goal. But with the clock ticking down, perhaps we waited too late to make these subs because absolutely nothing is happening. Uh, All right. What a boring game. I mean, it's a clean sheet. We don't have many of those. That's quite nice. And it does keep us in ninth place as things stand, but only nine points ahead of Bordeaux in that relegation zone. Always concerning when both your strikers, Brea Moreno vows to end his goal drought because he's not found a goal in nine hours of playing and Divine has now played 10 matches without scoring a goal. I might criticize both of them and I'm going to say, don't worry about not scoring. Your goals will come eventually. And he seems happy about that. We'll say the same to Divine as well. And I may have said something different Different though because I've now got to set him a target. Uh, okay, let's set you a target. Oh, he doesn't want to have a target. Um, well, I feel your standards are too low then. And he says, you're right. I need to change. Okay. Should have done some more reading there before I just started clicking randomly. But the best day of the year is here. Youth intake day is here. And whoa, three five-star players, including a goalkeeper and a centre-back when we were told explicitly we were not going to get good goalkeepers or centre-backs. We said strikers would be quite good, wingers and attacking midfielders would be quite good. And actually down here, we have, wow, oh, wow, four and a half star, four star. Okay, this has been a very good youth intake. Let's start at the top though with Arno. He's the goalkeeper and he looks pretty good. Command of the area, 15, decisions, 13, reflexes, 15. I can see this guy being good in the future. How does he just instantly compare with Etienne Green, for example? So he was already better in terms of communication. He's very similar on shot stopping. And actually, he's in a quite similar mold in terms of 
the, the shape of the graph, I suppose. He perhaps lacks a little bit of physicality and distribution in comparison to Etty and Green right now in terms of how they're related in terms of their attributes. But he's 15 years old. This guy's going to be so good. Okay, so then we've got the striker. And you have got 13 finishing, 8 composure, a little bit low. 4 strength is not great. Eight, I mean, okay. He's got 5-star potential, but it's not going to be as a uh, advanced forward on attack constantly. He's not got the attributes for that. We do tend to play with a pressing forward, actually, don't we, on attack? And he does lack the physical capabilities for that right now. So maybe deep lying forward on support is, is slightly better, but he lacks the... We need to work heavily on your physicals if you're going to become anything, really. Then there's our centre-back here, who has got 12 heading, 14 marking, 17 tackling, 18 natural fitness. Get those physicals up. And my word, we could be onto a decent defender there. I mean, again, obviously he's not going to be anywhere near as good, but Jesus Vallejo, our new centre-back, just comparing with two of them, right? You can kind of see a similar sort of mould building there. Very good defensively. Quite decent when it comes to speed. Will get better. Physically should eclipse Jesus Vallejo at some point. Jesus is not uh, not really great physically, but Jesus is very good in terms of his defending and his mental attributes. And of course, those mentals will get there as Cisse gets into the midpoint of his career. But I think fundamentally, it's looking good. And then we've got players down here. So this guy is four and a half stars. Thomas Berger, attacking midfielder. We don't tend to play with them, do we, really? We could play him as an inside forward, but his finishing and composure is a little bit low. I don't know how we'd shoehorn him into our tactic currently, but he's not going to get good for another five years or so. So things could change drastically in that time. And then the last player we'll look at is the inside forward on the right-hand side, Arthur, who actually has got some decent physicals for his age. Actually, his mentals are pretty good for his age as well. It's the technicals that could do with some work, although he's got a solid baseline. I'm actually quite happy with this guy. So I am incredibly pleased with that youth intake. I think we've got some real talent. I think really we need to get the talented guys playing in the B team as soon as possible. I think over summer we need to just clear out everyone who's dead wood there and put in all our high potential players to get them playing at the highest level of football possible at their age. And then as they improve past the fourth division level, we can loan them out to teams in the third and second division. So maybe what we should be doing is looking at another affiliate club. Saying that, actually, we have got Laporte who are currently in the, are they in the fourth division or the third division? I think, no, they're in the fourth division. So we need a third division team, ideally. Some one of these teams, because we currently have a fourth division team and a second division team, and you're, a, I think, fifth division team, actually. We can't see their league. So let's look for an affiliate club where we send players out on loan to the third division. It'd be quite handy to send our players there. So let's go and say loaning players, please. And they said we don't need any more of them. Well, we do. We could do with one in the third division, couldn't we? We'll be left behind by some of our biggest rivals if it doesn't happen and they say yes sure right do you want to pick the team out yes please I'd love to do that so let's choose a club right now then and yeah French national is where we're looking in that second division so we need a team that has got good training facilities and is predicted to do pretty well so Nimes for example are predicted to come first they're currently third right now are they third by a long way yeah quite a long way so there's a good chance they won't get promoted. And actually, I've looked through quite a lot of them. They, they probably are the best in terms of training facilities. However, if they are favourites to go up, there's a good chance there'll be a second division team next season or the season afterwards. I'd rather have a team that's more just always going to be a third division team. And I think Red Star in Paris... They've got 12 facilities, youth and training, although it's only training we're bothered about, to be fair. Predicted to come in 7th place, currently ninth. They're a mid-table team. I think this is the sort of club we need to be partnering with. I think it makes a little bit more sense right now, so we're going to choose these guys as an affiliate club. And actually, we should just double-check their formation of what they play. They play exactly the same formation as us, or at least the same shape, different roles probably. But it makes sense to me. Let's confirm these guys as our new affiliate club. So hopefully next season we can send a couple of our better players from the under-21s or the B team, wherever it is, to them. Anyway, after all that excitement, Ren coming up next. And we can finally bring Etienne Green back into the team following his injury. But I think I'll keep the rest of the lineup the exact same. And the first highlight of the game is coming towards us. Now, Ren have been a pretty decent team so far this season. I think they've just hit a bit of bad form. I'm sure they were top four at one point and they're now more like seventh place I believe and if Mitrovic can open up the scoring here like he just has done there it puts us in a wonderful position and puts the pressure on the team above us in the table and actually with the results going as they are right now it puts us just two points behind them in the table which is a very nice position to be in after the, such a poor start that we had, I think we have turned things around quite nicely, which is really nice to see, especially if we can now 
get ourselves a little bit further forwards here as we win the ball. Mitrovic, the goal scorer, obviously coming back off his injury and getting that goal is very important for him as Gonzalo Estevez now brings it down this near side of the pitch. Can he get across in the middle? He kind of does to Koba, who's on the edge of the area. He shoots with his left foot and puts it just wide of the mark. But despite Ren being the home team here, they've had just the one shot. I'm surprised at just how little they have done in this game so far and how well we've nullified them as we lose possession and now they come on a counter-attack. And as soon as I say how poor they've been, watch them score here. I can absolutely guarantee it as they get in the area, put a ball across the... It's a penalty. No, it wasn't a penalty. Did you not see Jose Massa just literally kick it off his foot to go out for a corner? There's no way that's a penalty, referee. So he's going to go to the VAR. He's going to look at it. He's going to realise how stupid that call was and not give the penalty. So here we go. Penalty not given. Please. Take your time, the ref. What's your decision going to be? He says, no, thank you. Thank you. And if we can just stay in front in this game, this will be a huge win for us, actually. Like, we should not be winning this game, and yet here we are 1-0 up. 62 minutes gone. Maybe I'm talking too soon here, potentially, but as uh, Ren try and bring the ball over into the centre of the pitch, they're working it forward now as they play it out to that far side. Ball is going to be sent into the penalty area. The shot comes in. It's sent wide again. We're getting lucky. I think we're getting a little bit lucky. I mean, we've played well, but I think we're also getting a little bit lucky as we bring Florian Tardeu on. I think uh, we'll also bring Batu Ben Seeker on as well. Just to try and shore up those defensive areas, make sure we've got enough energy in those areas to stop any attack from Ren coming through. Although saying that, you know, maybe we should have kept those players on who were doing a, such a good job to start off with. But a move straight off the training ground here has resulted in a Ren equaliser with 20 minutes to go. That is rather frustrating, I must say. And if they score a winner now late on, it just won't feel deserved. It just won't feel deserved at all. But they are the better team as they put the ball into the area and it's been blocked a couple of times there before going out for a corner. Now, hopefully we've gotten wise to the move to the edge of the area, but no one is marking the guy once again, although this time it goes to the near post over the bar. Divine, it's your chance to shine. We need a skull out of you, please. Cafro, edge of the area, looks for Mitrovic at the far post, can't win the header. Dewey actually wins it, of course. He was on loan with us last season before they recalled him because apparently we weren't playing him enough, even though we played him every single game. I thought Etienne Grimm was going to leave it there for the striker to run onto. Instead, he collects it, rolls it out to Florian, who gives it to Marsa. Marsa then goes forward to Fontan, who's got some room to run into down this left-hand side of the pitch. As he cuts it inside to Mitrovic, has to go backwards to Martinez, who plays it across the pitch to Kobe, who's on the edge of the area now, shoots and scores the rocket to probably win us the game here. And as the clock ticks down, that was the winning goal of the game. Ren won, St. Etienne 2. So that is a surprise. I did not expect us to win that game. Uh, next game, though, is PSG. Not a chance we are winning that game. 74 points from 26 games and a plus 76 goal difference. They have only dropped four points this season by drawing two games. So for the PSG game, I don't really feel a need to change the team. We're going to lose whatever formation we play, so we may as well just play our normal game and see what damage we can do. To topple PSG, I, I think will be one of the biggest things we could ever do in Foot Manager, really, because we are never, ever, ever going to be able to spend more than PSG. They will always, always, always be able to spend more money than us. As Moreno hits the post very early on there, and actually it goes out as a goal kicker that was offside. No, goes down as a goal kick. That would have been a perfect start to the game. But as I say, we'll never be able to beat them in terms of spending wages or spending transfer fees or anything like that. So we have to be so at our very, very best in order to beat PSG across the season. Now, they haven't lost a single game yet this season, so let's not get too excited. They've only dropped four points from 26 games, 27 games, including this one, I suppose and they haven't dropped those points yet. So we're just not going to be able to beat them. We have to be at our absolute peak, peak, peak best to stand a chance of competing with them. But, you know, if Moreno had been a little more accurate, we could be 2 nil up here already. Now, Dembele's got a corner for PSG, which has been put just over the bar by Kim Pembe. I thought that was going to nestle itself in the top corner. But they might do that from this next chance right now, as Xavi Simmons gives the ball and gets it back on the edge of the area. Now, that probably was a foul, whether it was in the area or not, I don't know. It, it probably will be, won't it? I think it probably will be, won't it? The referee's checking the VAR now, apparently, for it. And he says, no penalty! My word, I think we've been lucky there, because that was borderline. And yet, we are about to go into halftime, one up against PSG, limiting them to just three shots and zero on target. 
My word. I'm going to outstretch my arms and say you're doing well. Keep working hard until full time. Imagine if we come away from this game with a victory. Imagine if we win this game. That would just be mental. Given where we started the season absolutely terribly to the point where we've improved so much we are beating PSG with 65 minutes. I'm so reluctant to make any changes though Estevez is quite tied at right back so I'm going to take him off for Dennis Appiah. Mitrovic playing very poorly let's bring Navarro on instead and just make a couple of changes here and there as the ball forward has been cut out by PSG and Mbappe the captain with the captain's armband on there brings it forwards for them shoots and puts it way over the bar. I'm not going to get too excited I am not going to get too excited about this because 15 minutes to go a lot can still happen a lot can still happen and, and Jose Fontan is quite tired so let's get him off the pitch with Vaclav instead as is a PSG free kick from the edge of the area. I mean, it's very straight on. I don't think this will go in the back of a net. Asensio to take it. He's really taken his time though, and that's got me worried. Surely Etienne Green can stop this. I mean, this is it. You cannot get more top corner than that. It literally comes off the, the apex of the post and the, and the crossbar there to go in the back of the net. Oh, and if they score right now, if they score right now, it will be so undeserved. So undeserved. Please no. Mbappe in the middle. You know what? We came into this game thinking we weren't going to win. So I'm not going to be too upset or anything. <gasps> Dennis Appiah. Oh my word. What a time to get your first goal of the season. The 92nd minute. Dennis Appiah has just earned as a point against PSG. Okay. I mean, I'm still delighted. I came into this game thinking we were going to get battered. The frustrating part is we didn't win it. And that's mental that we are frustrated that we've not won this game. But to come away with a draw, my word. What a result. So we stay in ninth place. We are nine points away from the European places. I don't think we're going to catch up to these teams. I don't think we're going to put on any push there. I also don't think now that we are 13 points clear of the relegation zone, we're going to be anywhere near that. So I think we're just going to sort of limbo around mid-table. And so with only seven games left this season, uh, we'll probably come back to the games in May or something like that. But I don't think there's going to be much to play for. So it might just even be the Nantes game, for example, if there really is nothing to play for. And then we spend most of the episode sorting through the team. Because in our first team, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players on a permanent deal leaving the club at the end of their contract. Two who are leaving the club at the end of their loan deal. So half our first team squad have got contracts expiring. And I'll be honest, there aren't many that I want to keep, really. Obviously, we had this discussion last time, but like Batu Bin Sika, I'd keep him if his wage demands were a lot lower than they actually are. We can find someone just as good as him for less, I can imagine. Same with Cafro, he'll want big wages, but we can find someone just as good, if not better, for less. So I need to do some scouting to get ready for summer, because I think next episode, once we finish our games, we are going to have a whole revamp.